you just got done dumping your holding tanks and when you check the levels you find out that they still indicate that they're full. This can be a common problem especially just after your coach goes out of warranty because these monitoring panels are not built very well. In fact they're built about as cheap as they can be built and they just are not reliable especially as time goes on. These are the walnuts that are used for the sensors for the various holding tanks as well as the fresh water tank for that matter. And the way they work is there's no tension right now on them. And you drill a 3 inch hole into the side of the tank. You put this in from the outside and then when you tighten this down it squeezes this and expands it and so then it makes a seal. So the only thing that this probe is measuring is the surface right here. Well, these tend to foul and when they foul you don't have an accurate reading. Well there's a product called Horst Miracle Probes and they actually I had a hard time getting these. The only ones that were available were the gray tank and the black tank ones which I've got here I was able to get from the manufacturer because they were actually waiting for this which they sent me in the PDF they're waiting for them they're waiting for the company to make a cardboard print for this so that they could put them in the packaging well I, you know I don't care about packaging so I was able to get these for the black tank uh, sent to me without the retail packaging now the only real difference between these two the gray ones just have a metal rod sticking out where the black ones have what they call a tent that sticks out over the top of it. Now what this is supposed to do is you put the tent in so that the top is pointing up, the tent is pointing up. And then if you get toilet paper or anything that lays in the black tank it's not going to foul the rod, it's going to be insulated by this. At least that's the theory. So the way these work is you essentially uh, loosen this uh, walnut and pull it out of your tank and you'll see these are about the same, they're both 3 8 and then you put one of these in and tighten it down and that just replaces the uh, probe. You'll see they're, they stick in the tank much further. Because this is a piece of Teflon that goes all the way to the end and you can see here it's a little bit discolored probably from a little oxidation um, in the package which is okay I mean it's gonna still work anyway this Teflon coating or this Teflon tube through here and the same and it's the same thing here it's got a little Teflon tube well water doesn't stick to that if you take this and you dump it in water and pull it out you'll see the water just fall right off so that's how these work is that they keep the water from going from the measuring tip up through the gunk to the next one. So we're going to install these. Now they do say that you may have to clean these occasionally still so we'll see what happens but hopefully these will last at least longer than the warranty period on the old style. Now also on these tents uh, you can see where they've put a notch in the end uh, of the screw threads so that when you install it you keep that notch down corresponding to the notch here so that you can ensure that you keep this pointed up so that toilet paper and things don't follow it. So next step is to install these and then we'll wrap this project up. Okay I'm working under the RV uh, with a holding tank and this is the uh, gray water tank and you'll notice there is actually another style of uh, probe and these are actually spin on and what they do is they weld these right into the tank by spinning them on with a router. Now fortunately these are not removable so what we have to do on these is we're going to have to drill a hole adjacent to it for the probes. One thing that's interesting is this tank is kind of an oddball shape so, so these are really not very different in the heights there are only maybe an inch difference at the most. So when we drill these in here, we have to make sure we get them at exactly the same height. What I'm going to do is take a ruler and measure from the top down the center of this plus, you know, where the new hole is. 
Now, this should go without saying that this tank should be empty before you drill in this. And also, this is going to be a one-shot deal, so you don't want to really mess up too much when you're drilling this, because then you're going to have a problem with the tank. The other thing is, I see there's a little corrosion on these already, and that's something we'll also take care of. So, also only do one of them at a time, so you don't get the colors mixed up. But on the other hand, uh, what I always do when I do a project such as this is I always take some photographs and if you uh, took all these probes off and you needed to find out where they go back, you could at least look at the photograph and find out what the original layout was. Now when I drill, I'm going to use a Air One Unibet because I found that in some test plastic, the Unibet creates a very smooth hole and a standard drill bit really doesn't work very well. It, it it wants to gouge it out. Now if all you have is a standard drill bit, I would recommend probably putting it in reverse and that might make a smoother cut. But I highly recommend getting some of these unibits. Now what I also did is I marked with some red tape exactly where the 3 inch mark is because I certainly don't want to drill this hole bigger than it has to be. So we're going to drill this hole first. So what I have to do before then is I got to pull this connection off so that I can drill to the side of it. Okay, so I marked this one and I'm going to make the first drill. And again, this is a one-shot deal. This tank is a little bit on the thick side, so I couldn't get the unit bit all the way through because each one of these depth serrations isn't very big. So what I'm going to end up doing is putting a 3 inch drill in here after all to finish cleaning out the hole. Now it won't gouge it out like it would if you started it, so that doesn't work too bad that way. And now we'll see if we can get this in here. we got to push it all the way into this surface here, and then we're going to put the first nut on it. And then when we tighten it up, it should expand and seal the connection. Now, it didn't say really in the instructions how tight to make these. It just says tighten the first nut to make a good leak-proof seal. So you may actually have to come back here after you get the tank and, uh, you know, take a look at them. Now I'm going to put the wire on here, put the other nut on. And we'll tighten that up off the first one. There we go. So that one's in. I will continue on with the other three. Well, as you can see, I've got all four of the probes moved over. But now what I have is I have this product called Urethane Seal Coat. So essentially what it is, is an electronic conformal coating and it's basically the same thing that they use to waterproof circuit boards and things. So what I'm going to do with this stuff is I'm going to waterproof these connections here by just spraying it on. And that way we shouldn't have any issues with corrosion. Well, after finishing the gray tank, I went over and did the black tank. The black tank, though, had the standard well nuts, as I demonstrated earlier, so I didn't have to drill any new holes, at least for that one. So now, here's a gray tank showing empty. Here's a black tank showing empty. I think this is a successful project.